Hi everyone. In this video, I am going to walk you through how companies account for the possibility of bad debts in their receivables, and specifically I'm going to do so using what's known as the allowance method. Let's take a look. All right, first up, a brief primer on receivable valuation. So whenever you record a receivable on your books, you typically record it at the amount that is owed to you because you expect that someone will pay you what they owe. However, subsequently, you are going to adjust your receivables for any amount that is estimated to be uncollectible or known for a fact to be uncollectible. So to the extent that you don't think your receivables will get paid, you must go ahead and adjust the receivable on your balance sheet to reflect the amount you don't think you're going to get paid. And then um, U.S. GAAP requires companies to use what is known as the allowance method of um, doing these bad debt estimations. Um, the alternative to this is what's known as the direct write-off method, and I won't be discussing that in this video. That is actually not allowed under U.S. GAAP, so the focus of this video will be on what's known as the allowance method. You will see where that name uh, comes from in just a moment. All right, so here we go. What is the allowance method? How does it work? Where does the name come from? Well, here's the deal. Under the allowance method, whenever a company estimates that a certain amount of its receivables are uncollectible, it is required to record bad debt expense. So you are going to have a journal entry. That's going to say bad debt expense, and that's going to be the debit in your journal entry. Okay, notice that bad debt expense, that is going to hit your income statement. That's going to be an operating expense on your income statement. Um, that is going to reduce your net income. And the interesting thing here is this is based on an estimate of what you don't think you're going to get. This doesn't really reflect who didn't pay you. It's actually only saying, what do we think we're not going to get paid? And, and I'm going to revisit that in, in a little bit. Now, we need a credit for this journal entry. And so that's where this second bullet comes in. When you're using the allowance met method, the estimated uncollectibles are tracked on the balance sheet in a contra asset account that is known as the allowance for doubtful accounts. So the credit in this journal entry, allowance for doubtful accounts. Again, that is a contra asset on your balance sheet that is going to show up right beneath the receivable. So it's going to say AR, next line, less allowance for doubtful accounts. This presentation enables investors to see what did customers owe you and how much of that do you think you're not going to get paid. All right, next up. When an estimated uncollectible becomes a known uncollectible. So remember, at this point, we've only estimated that we're not going to get paid, and that's what we've recorded. But at some point, we're going to know for sure whether we're getting paid or not. So in the instance where we find out for sure that we are not going to receive a, a, a portion of, our, of, our, of a receivable, we are going to do what's known as a write-off. We're going to write off that receivable from our books. Now, since a receivable is an asset, to write it off, we are going to credit it. So credit, in this case, I'm going to just call it accounts receivable. But it, this could work for any other receivables, but you'll typically see it most often in accounts receivable. We're going to credit accounts receivable. That is the process of writing off the receivable from the books. Now, if you think about this in a situation of um, getting paid, when you get paid, your journal entry looks like this. Cash, debit, AR, credit, right? You collected money, so you took the receivable off the books. The difference between that and this is we're not getting money. We're not getting anything. The receivable is still coming off the books, but this is actually kind of costing us because we're not collecting the cash for it. At the same time, the debit that's going to go on this instead of cash because we're not getting paid, the debit here is going to be the allowance for doubtful accounts. Now, what's the logic behind doing this? Well. Remember, the allowance for doubtful accounts is tracking what we think we won't get paid, right? And so to the extent that some of it has come true, the AR goes away, but our estimate is no longer needed either because 
it came true. It's no longer an estimate. And so the estimate is going away as well. Notice it was a credit to establish that estimate. It's a debit to make it go away. All right, so this is this process right here, this is called the write-off. All right, last thing that can happen. What if you write off an account, but eventually, say, whoever you wrote off, they have a turn of fortunes, They're, they get back in financial health, and they say, hey, we want to make good on our payment. They ultimately pay you. All right, well, again, think of what a payment of AR looks like. It traditionally involves you get cash, you take the AR off the books. Now, the only thing that makes this special is in this case, we're talking about collecting cash for AR that already came off the books. That's a little bit of a problem because we can't take it off the books twice, right? We have to take it off the books. It's not there anymore to take off again. Well, the way you solve this hiccup is you essentially reverse the write-off. So I'm going to move that collection down, and above it, I'm going to say, how about this? Debit AR to put the AR back on the books, credit allowance, allowance for doubt. It becomes a pain to, to write after a while. Credit allowance for doubtful accounts to put the estimate of what we think we won't get back on the books, right? We're essentially just taking this, this write-off, and we're reversing it. We flip-flopped it. So we undid the write-off. Now the AR is still on the books. Now we can collect it. And, and this process right here is known as a recovery. You recovered a previously written off account. Now, one question I, I, I get from students a lot is they say, well, wait a minute. You debited AR and you credited AR. Would it be okay to simply record what you see in the middle here? Would it be okay to simply debit cash credit allowance? And the answer is, Yes, that is technically okay, because that still gets you to the same end goal. The only thing is, if, if I teach it that way, if I say debit cash credit allowance, um, that, that, that uh, sparks looks of bewilderment, because it, it's hard to understand why you'd be, it, not hard to understand why you debit cash, you get cash, but it's hard to understand why you credit allowance without kind of showing the longer process of, well, the reason you're crediting allowance is because you're reversing the write-off that you previously recorded. Now, the reason that ultimately AR doesn't change is because you put the AR back on the books, but you did it because they wanted to pay it off. And so it comes right back off afterwards. So those are your three basic pieces of the allowance method. Estimate your bad debts. That is usually an adjusting entry at the end of a period. Record any write-offs once a bad debt is known to be uncollectible. Reverse and collect on any write-offs that ultimately get paid. This will rarely happen relative to the other two. All right, I've got an example to kind of hammer this home. This is a complicated topic, and sometimes it's, it's easy for students to get confused. It's hard to follow. And so I, I figured it would help to walk through an example where we see those pieces at play. And you'll notice I even have the ledgers, so you can kind of see what's going on in the ledgers as we go. We'll talk about that impact of the financial statements from those ledgers as soon as we're done. So here we say Flyer Corps has AR due from customers for $10,000. Notice in my receivables account, I have a $10,000 balance sitting there. All right. It expects 1,000 of the balance might be uncollectible. However, at the end of the accounting period, only 200 is known to be uncollectible. So remember, once you expect an uncollectible, you do have to go ahead and establish your contra asset, establish your allowance account for the portion of the uncollectible. And we do that with the following journal entry. Bad debt expense, and in this case it's $1,000. Credit allowance, and I'm gonna simplify it going forward, for DA, $1,000. This is our estimate of the bad debt. And so what happens as a result of this is we have this debit of 1,000 in our bad debt account. We have this credit of 1,000 in our allowance account. Then it says, however, at the end of the accounting period, only 200 is known to be uncollectible. Once something is known to be uncollectible, that's when we write it off. And the process of writing off looks like this. Get rid of the AR, because you aren't gonna have that account anymore, but also get rid of the related estimate for uncollectibles, because it's no longer an estimate, it has now come true, all right? Going over to my ledgers and updating them, my AR goes down 200, and my allowance also goes down 200. 
All right, that's it for the journal entries. We have the estimate, we have the write-off. I ask down here, how does this treatment affect the financial statements? And for this, let me just show you something. Um, so accounts receivable at this point has a $9,800 balance. Bad debt expense has a $1,000 balance. Allowance for doubtful accounts has an $800 balance. When I ask how does this affect the financial statements, really I'm talking about two things. I'm talking about income statement and balance sheet. And I'll start with the income statement. Our income statement is going to be reduced by $1,000. When I say income statement, net income is going to be reduced by $1,000. Now, net income is supposed to reflect the revenues that you've earned and the costs that you've incurred. And here's one of those situations where there is no way to keep both the income statement and the balance sheet accurate. And so one is going to be favored over the other. In this case, it's the income statement that is going to face inaccuracies because we did not incur a cost of $1,000. At this point, we've only incurred a cost of $200. We know $200 did not get collected. However, we have written an expense on our income statement of $1,000. However, the reason we did that was to establish this allowance. And take a look at what our balance sheet is going to look like here. On our balance sheet, in our asset section, we're going to show AR $9,800. And then beneath that, we're going to put less allowance for doubtful accounts, 800. And that's going to give us what we call a net AR of 9,000. Now, look how informative that is to investors. We are owed 9,800 from customers. We think 800 of it won't get paid. Our net collections that we expect is 9,000. This net collections of 9,000, also known as the net realizable value of the AR. Net realizable value. In other words, how much do we really think will come true of the 9,800? This is extremely accurate and extremely informative to investors because you're telling them exactly what you were owed, exactly what you're estimating you're not going to get paid, exactly what you think you're going to ultimately collect. But the only way to get that level of accuracy and informativeness on the balance sheet is to essentially undercut the income statement, be a little bit conservative, and record a cost incurred for the total expected cost rather than the actual cost. You're sacrificing income statement accuracy for balance sheet accuracy. Um, and that's just how the allowance method works, and it, it's viewed as a, a positive trade-off by, by standard setters. All right, last up. This is still the same problem here. Um, notice I've kept all the numbers from um, the first uh, portion of this problem. All that's going to happen in this one now is our recovery. Following the previous write-off of 200, Flyer Corp receives a $50 payment from one of the written-off accounts. Now remember, normally a payment is just debit cash credit AR, only in this case, we already wrote that account off. It doesn't exist anymore. So in order to collect it, we, we've got to put it back on the books, but sorry about that. I'm circling allowance. I should be circling up here. It's the same 200, but, but I should be circling in the receivable. All right. In order to collect 50 of that 200, that 200 has to be back on the right side of the, the ART account. And so the first step to this process is to do what's known as um, reversing the write-off. Put the AR back, and specifically the $50 worth. So debit AR, credit allowance 50. Why am I crediting allowance? Well, again, this goes back to this was what our write-off looked like. We no longer needed the AR. We no longer needed the estimate. Well, now that we're putting the AR back, we have to also put that estimate back. The logic being this. Let's, let's go ahead and update these ledgers. So I've put the 50 back in AR, and I've put the 50 back into my allowance. Notice that my allowance, it was 800. Now it's going to be back up to 850 as a result of this. The reason is because we still assumed that $1,000 wasn't going to get paid. It just turns out that 50 that we thought wasn't going to get paid, well, that 50 actually did get paid. Our, our overarching assumption is at the end of the day, there's still going to be 1,000 that we don't think we're going to get paid. And and we base that on historical trends in our collections, on the riskiness of our customers. There's various factors that go into play. But basically, we still think that at the end of the day, that full thousand is going to end up being uncollectible. At this point, one 
850 is known to be uncollectible, 850 is still expected to be coming at a future time. So that's why it makes sense to put the estimate back on the books when you put the AR back on the books. And of course, as part of the recovery process, then we get paid. So AR and cash. And of course, this is going to make that AR go away again. So now we're going to be down to still 9,800. Whoops, put that on the wrong side. Still 9,800 in our receivables, only this time it's not 9,800 because we wrote off two, it's 9,800 because we wrote off 150 and we collected 50. But we're still at 9,800 on the receivables. We're still at 1,000 on our bad debts. But notice we've got 850 on our allowance. And so our balance sheet would be updated to say AR 9,800 less allowance for doubtful accounts of 850 net AR of um, 8,950. Fifty at this point. So that's a little bit different than the prior slide where we had net AR of 1000 because we did receive $50 since then. Okay, so we're down to net AR of, of $89.50. So that's an example of, of, of recovery. All right, that's it. Now, th this one was a long one. There's a lot of pieces here. It just makes sense to show it all together because it's all interrelated. But just know this is what's known as the allowance method three pieces, the estimate of the bad debt, the write-offs of known bad debts, and then recoveries should a previously written off bad debt ever get paid. I hope you found this helpful, and I hope you join me for another video.